Welcome back. Microsoft published an amazing blog article about using Microsoft 365 Defender to protect against SolarGate. And as you look through this blog article, there's some fantastic information in here. So what I've done is converted this into a presentation that I'd like to use with you today to tell the story about using Microsoft 365 Defender to protect against SolarGate. So let's jump into it. I'll provide a link to where you can download this presentation in the video description, but just understand that everything in that blog article I've taken and dumped it into this presentation to be able to make it easier to tell you the story. So let's dive in. Now, a quick disclaimer here. There's a lot to this. In fact, there's a lot more than what I have time to show you in this video. So I'm just gonna give you the high level. Uh, I'm not gonna jump into Sentinel. I'm not gonna go into deeper into Microsoft 365, attack surface reduction, ADFS, Azure Active Directory, on-prem Active Directory, all that. I'm not gonna go into it. That's out of scope for this presentation. But over time, I'll publish additional videos and presentations on those. Microsoft has published a lot of resources out there to use these different products to respond to SolarGate. So please go to aka.ms slash SolarGate to learn more about those resources. Okay, before we jump into it, we first need to understand what is a supply chain attack. Targeting suppliers and software developers, the goal is to access source codes, build processes, or update mechanisms by infecting legitimate applications to distribute malware. Now, how do supply chain attacks work? Well, it starts with the attacker gaining access to IT systems at a supplier or software developer vendor. Next, the attacker hunts for unprotected networks, server infrastructure, and unsafe coding practices. And then from there, they gain access to source code for an application. The app with malicious code embedded in it is then released out to the public through normal means. And the app code is also digitally signed and certified by that vendor, which makes it extremely difficult to detect because it appears to be legitimate code coming from a legitimate application at that vendor. So the attacker changes that source code and hides malware in the build processes of the app or even in the update processes, which is what happened with SolarGate without the vendor's knowledge. And that malicious code, because it's signed, can run with the same trust and permissions as the app. And then the end customer becomes compromised as a result. And then the attacker can carry out their actions on objectives such as exfiltrating data. Now, what are some types of supply chain attacks? Well, compromised software building tools or updated infrastructure, uh, stolen, co stolen code signed certificates or signed malicious apps using the identity of a development company, uh, compromised specialized code shipped into hardware or firmware components, and pre-installed malware on devices such as cameras and USBs and smartphones and all of that kind of stuff. So let's jump into the SolarGate attack. If we look at the high level kill chain here for the attack, it starts with supply chain compromise. And so the attackers compromise a software development or distribution pipeline for the SolarWinds Orion platform to insert malicious backdoor code into a legitimate DLL file. And then from there, we have initial access command and control. And so those compromised DLL files is then loaded when the application starts, the Orion application, running the backdoor code that connects to a command and control server, thus letting the attackers to the front door. And then from there, they can do hands-on keyboard attack and start compromising on-premises systems. So the backdoor access allows attackers to you know, go out and steal credentials, escalate their privileges, move laterally, and based on the behavior that's been observed, uh, steal SAML signing keys and gain administrative privileges, which then results into hands-on keyboard attacks in the cloud. And attackers use those stolen signing keys for SAML or admin privileges to create their own SAML tokens and forge those to access cloud resources and get access to mailboxes and data stored in the cloud and exfiltrate that sensitive data. So the techniques used by SolarGate. Well, an intrusion through malicious code in the SolarWinds Orion product is kind of what, what started with all this. And this results in the attacker gaining a foothold in the network and then gain elevated credentials. And so Microsoft Defender now has detections for these files. And there's a great article out there from SolarWinds that talks more about uh, what, what's happening here. So I encourage you to look at that. Now an intruder using administrative privileges uh, acquired through an on-premises compromise to gain access to an organization's trusted SAML token signing certificate. And this enables them to forge SAML tokens that impersonate any of the organization's existing users and accounts including those highly privileged administrator accounts. 
Now, it's also been observed that anomalous logins using the SAML tokens created by a compromised token signing certificate can be used against any on-premises resources. And this is regardless of identity system or vendor, as well as against any cloud environment, regardless of the vendor, because they have been configured to trust that certificate. And because the SAML tokens are signed with their own trusted certificate, these anomalies here, they could easily be missed. So using highly privileged accounts as another technique that's been observed, acquired through the technique above or other means, attackers may add their own credentials to existing application service principles, enabling to call APIs with the permission assigned to the application. A great example of this is OAuth applications with say Office 365 and other SaaS apps. Okay, let's jump into tracking the cross-domain SolarGate attack from endpoint to the cloud. Now, we're gonna use Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and run a threat analytics report to identify any device that may have the compromised SolarWinds Orion platform binaries or are exposed to the attack due to misconfiguration. And so we're here inside the Microsoft Defender Security Center under threat analytics, and we pulled up the SolarGate supply chain attack. And right here in the overview tab, we can see, are there any devices in the environment that are subject to this or that may be misconfigured and vulnerable? Now, from the vulnerability patching status chart, when I drill into this, I can then view mitigation details to see a list of devices with the vulnerability ID uh, TVM2020-0002. Now that vulnerability ID was added by Microsoft to specifically help you with investigating SolarGate in the environment. Now threat and vulnerability management inside Defender for Endpoint provides more information about the vulnerability as well as all relevant applications via the software inventory view. And so there are multiple security recommendations you can see in this screenshot to address this specific threat, SolarGate, including instructions on how to update the software versions installed on those exposed devices. And here you can see some information about that. So really easily, I can go out and see, are there any devices in the environment that might be impacted with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the malicious uh, software update installed on them, and then go out there and start mitigating it. Now, for those of you who know me, you know I love KQL and advanced hunting. And so using Microsoft 365 Defender or Defender for Endpoint, I can run a uh, advanced hunting search and just query the system to see, are there any, uh, any SolarWinds Orion uh, binaries in the environment that are impacted that are running. And so this is just a very quick and easy uh, query that I can run. And I put a link down here when you download the PowerPoint later that you can browse out to, to have access to this. Now, what I love about these queries is you can also create your own indicators off of it and have it alert you anytime it, it finds results to the query. More on that in another video. Now, here's an example of using Microsoft 365 Defender. And so reviewing the incidents in the incidents queue and look for those alerts that are relevant to the techniques, tactics, and procedures as described in the threat analytics report that I showed you previously. And so this is really cool because some SolarGate activities may not be directly tied to this specific threat, but may trigger alerts due to generally suspicious or other malicious behaviors. Now, all of the alerts in Microsoft 365 Defender provided by the different Microsoft 365 products like Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, Cloud App Security, Defender for Office 365, Azure Active Directory Premium. All of those alerts are then correlated and if they're found to be related to each other, they're converted into an incident and added to an incident. And here you can see an incident on my screenshot with a tab here for 31 alerts. And these incidents help you see the relationship between detected activities to better understand the end-to-end -end picture of the attack and help you investigate and then contain and remediate the threat. And so this, again, it gives you visibility really across the environment here beyond just the endpoint to any other related types of activity. Now, there's something called Microsoft Threat Experts and Experts on Demand. I'm not gonna go too deep into this. I encourage you to go out and, and click on some of these links here in the presentation to learn more about it. But some alerts are specially tagged with the Microsoft Threat Experts indicator to indicate malicious activities that Microsoft researchers have found in customer environments during the hunting phase. Now, as part of the Microsoft Threat Experts service, Researchers investigated the attack as it unfolded and hunted for associated attack behaviors, and then they sent out targeted attack notifications to uh, customers that were impacted. And so if you see an alert tagged with Microsoft Threat Experts, like you can see here in, in a black box here, then it's strongly recommended that you give it immediate attention. 
Now, additionally, Microsoft Thread Expert customers with experts on demand subscriptions can reach out directly to Microsoft on demand hunters for additional help in understanding the surrogate threat and the scope of its impact in their environments. Again, let's go back to uh, hunting and using threat hunting queries, KQL queries. Here's another great query we can use to hunt for related activity. Now the threat analytics report also provides all of those advanced hunting queries. And I'll provide a link to where you could download all of these as well towards the end of the presentation. And again, this is designed to help you locate additional related or similar activities across endpoints and identity and in your cloud SaaS apps. Now, advanced hunting uses a rich set of data sources, but in response to SolarGate, Microsoft has enabled streaming of Azure Active Directory audit logs into advanced hunting, and that's available to all customers who are in this Microsoft 365 Defender uh, public preview, which if you're interested in that, just click on the link here in the PowerPoint presentation, you can read more about it. Now, these logs provide traceability for all changes done by various features within Azure Active Directory. So, for example, if audit logs include changes to made to any resources within Azure AD, such as adding or removing users, apps, groups, roles, policies, etc. Now, if you do not have Microsoft Defender for Endpoint or are not early adopters of Microsoft 365 Defender, then there's additional advanced hunting queries I've linked out here in the presentation you can go look at. Uh, and then currently, this data is available to customers who have Microsoft Cloud App Security with the Office 365 uh, App Connector. So again, definitely check this out. Threat hunting queries makes it really easy uh, to go out and, and, and hunt for this stuff. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about detecting. Let's get a little bit more into detecting, and then we'll jump into blocking the malware here and any other malicious behavior on endpoints. Now, before we jump into that, we need to take a look at the kill chain for this attack. And there's several stages of it. So we're gonna look at stage one of the uh, kill chain here for the attack. And here you can see that those malicious binaries uh, introduce backdoor activities, which leads to um, inspecting the environment and then it gathers information about the environment to see if it's running in a real enterprise environment. Uh, it establishes command and control with a C2 server. It sends that information back, which then allows the attacker to gain remote control and game over, right? So let's break this down a little bit and unpack it. Now, in these slides, I've in uh, included a little key down here in the lower left-hand corner to reference that kill chain so you can get an understanding of, of where we're at here in the attack. So discovering and blocking backdoor activity. Okay, so when the compromised SolarWinds binaries gets loaded on a device through the normal update channels for SolarWinds, the back door goes through an extensive list of checks to ensure it's running an actual enterprise network and not on you know, some kind of a, a SOC analyst machine who's trying to you know, reproduce this. It then contacts a command and control server using a subdomain that is generated partly with information gathered from the affected device. And that means a unique subdomain is generated for each affected domain. That's extremely important. The back door allows the attackers to remotely run commands on the device and move to the next stages of the attack. Now again, go out there and read this article on in-depth analysis of the SolarGate malware because it goes really deep into the more technical details here. Okay, but let's move on. So blocking malicious binaries. Now there's comprehensive protection against this type of threat. And so Microsoft Defender Antivirus, which is the default anti-malware client in Windows 10, uh, which is also, uh, you can use it on Windows Server 2016 and 2019, detects and blocks those malicious DLLs and its behaviors as a result. So uh, Defender AV has already been updated to block this. And here you can see a screenshot using the Microsoft Defender Security Center where it's actually prevented uh, these binaries from running. Now what's cool about this is it quarantines those binaries even if the process is running. So that's how we could block this from happening. Now, when it comes to communication with that external C2 domain, uh, if the malicious code is successfully deployed, the backdoor lies dormant for up to two weeks. And that's what's been observed here. Now, that's interesting because it then attempts to contact numerous command and control domains with that primary domain uh, being avsvmcloud.com. Uh, but remember, it's creating a unique subdomain for every environment. Now, the backdoor uses a domain generation algorithm to then try to evade detection. And again, Microsoft 365 Defender, so Cloud App Security, Azure Active Directory Identity Protection, Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, Defender for Office 365, has been updated to detect and block this communication behavior with the C2 domain. Now, discovering potentially tampered devices. This is interesting here. So 
To evade security software and analyst tools, the SolarGate malware then enumerates the target system looking for certain running processes, any kind of loaded drivers, registry keys, with the goal of disabling them. Now, the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint sensor that's installed is one of the processes that this malware attempts to disable. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint has built-in protections against many techniques attackers use to try to disable these sensors, ranging from hardened OS protection to even anti-tampering policies. We'll do a video on that at some point, because that's pretty cool. And detections for a variety of tampering attempts. But successfully disabling the, the Defender for Endpoint sensor can prevent the system from reporting observed activities. And the multitude of signals reported into Microsoft 365 Defender provides a unique opportunity to hunt for systems where the tampering technique used might have been successful. Okay, so here's an advanced hunting query we can run that can be used to locate devices that should be reporting status but can't report or are not reporting. And boom, if I run that and I see that, then I can make this uh, you know, uh, hypothesis here that perhaps that sensor has been disabled and those systems have been compromised. So go out there and check out this query again. Advanced hunting is amazing. Okay, now let's talk about detecting hands-on keyboard activity within an on-premises environment. So just like in stage one of the attack, let's take a look at stage two and the kill chain that's associated. So once remote control has been established to that environment, uh, credential theft is gonna occur, uh, which will result in lateral movement, which gaining persistence, do some reconnaissance, that leads to LDAP enumeration, DC sync attack, uh, and compromise in ADFS, and then game over. So let's break this down a little bit more. Now, once that backdoor connection is established, the attacker's next goal is to achieve off-premises access to the organization's cloud services. So to do this, they must find a way to gain permissions to those services. Now, one technique that's been observed is the attackers will use um, the organization's Active Directory Federation services ADFS server. So that is if the organization is using ADFS. Uh, I know a lot of organizations have uh, have converted from ADFS, you know, federated identity to uh, synchronized identity using Azure AD Connect. Uh, but ADFS stores the SAML token signing certificate used to create authorization tokens for users and services to access cloud resources. So to attack the ADFS infrastructure, the attackers must first obtain appropriate domain permissions through on-premises intelligence gathering, lateral movement, and credential theft. Now, in my opinion, this is a really big deal because if you're able to forge that same old, uh, token for ADFS, it's game over. You could get into the cloud services and do data exfil uh, with, without being noticed, or it'd be very difficult to be noticed. Let's put it that way. Okay, so how do we identify that the attacker is performing that reconnaissance and trying to gather intelligence? Well, Attackers will collect data from on-premises Windows Server Active Directory first, and they use a renamed version of the utility AD Find. Now, again, this is what's been observed. Running queries against domain controllers as part of this reconnaissance stage of the attack, right? And then what's interesting here is Microsoft Defender for Endpoint can actually detect this behavior and allows an analyst to then tr track that compromised device at the stage to then ga gain visibility into really what is the attacker trying to do? What are they trying to search for? So we're on the right side, you can see a screenshot from Defender for Endpoint where we can see the AD Find tool is in use and the attacker's trying to collect data and perform reconnaissance. So we can identify that. Now, next stage in that kill chain was lateral movement and credential theft. So to gain access to a highly privileged account like an admin account needed for later steps in the kill chain, the attackers need to move laterally between devices, dump out those credentials on those devices until an account with needed privileges is compromised. And they have to do that while remaining under the covers and trying to be as stealth as they can. So a variety of credential theft methods are out there, such as dumping uh, LSAS and, um, and, and uh, that's in memory, but those are detected and blocked by Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And I've got some other videos where I, I show you that. Uh, the example to the right, though, shows the detection of lateral movement using WMI to run the attacker's payload using the run DLL32.exe process. So anyway, you can see over here on the right side where they're started trying to do that suspicious remote WMI execution. And according to the kill chain, that's how they're going to establish persistence. Now, if we continue this around stopping that lateral movement and credential theft, Microsoft Defender for Identity also detects and raises alerts on a variety of credential theft techniques. Now, as you know, Defender for Identity has a sensor that's installed on the domain controllers 
specifically looking for activity that's suspicious like this. So in addition to watching for alerts, those security analysts at the organization can then hunt across identity data in Microsoft 365 Defender for signs of identity compromise. So over on the right side here is a couple examples of using Microsoft Defender for identity uh, and advanced hunting queries to look for these patterns. So maybe it's enumeration of high value do, uh, domain controller assets followed by logon attempts to validate stolen credentials within a certain period of time. And then high volume of LDAP queries in a short period of time filtering on those non-domain controller devices. So um, I've, I've put a link again in the end of this presentation where you can find all these advanced hunting queries, but they're extremely useful. Take advantage of them. Uh, the, uh, the security analysts can take containment measures within the Microsoft 365 Security Center, uh, and they can use things like indicators to isolate devices involved and block remotely executed payload across the environment, as well as mark suspect users as compromised. Now, I want to break that down for a moment. When you mark a device as isolated, you actually isolate, it cuts off all network traffic except traffic to the Defender for Endpoint service. So thus isolating the device. It's like pulling the power cable or network cable, right? Um, now, when you mark a user as compromised, it tells Azure Active Directory identity protection that the user is at high risk, which if you have any conditional access statements in place uh, targeting high risk users, you can then you know, challenge with MFA, force a password reset, or just plain block access. So again, go out there and check out these queries, extremely useful. Okay, detecting and remediating persistence. Back to that WMI uh, query that they're trying to make here to establish persistence. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint can detect the advanced defense evasion and masquerading techniques used by these attackers to make their actions as close to normal as possible, such as when they try to bind to a, a WMI event filter with a logical consumer to remain persistent. So follow the recommended actions in the alert on the screen here to the right to remove persistence and pre prevent the attacker's payload from loading after reboot. And so this alert, again, is showing up in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, and down here you can see the recommended actions. Now, following along in the kill chain here, we wanna be able, able to catch uh, ADFS compromise in the attacker's ability to impersonate users in the cloud. Now, again, this is speaking specifically to ADFS, but could also apply to really any identity provider, regardless. So the next step in the attack focuses on the ADFS infrastructure and can unfold in two separate paths that lead to the same outcome. So let's break those down. And this allows them to create valid SAML tokens that allows them to impersonate users in the cloud. So that first path, stealing the SAML signing certificate. After gaining administrative privileges in the organization's on-premises network, and with access to the EDF server itself, the attackers access and extract the SAML signing certificate. So with this, this uh, signing certificate, the attackers create a valid SAML token to access various desired cloud resources as the identity of their choosing. Now, that's interesting. The second path is adding to or modifying existing federation trusts that are in place. So after gaining access to Azure Active Directory using compromised accounts, um, the attackers add their own certificate as a trusted entity in the domain, either by adding a new federation trust or, or adding a new federation trust to an existing tenant or modifying the properties of an existing federation trust. So as a result, any SAML token they create and sign will be valid for the identity of their choosing. Again, this is pretty, uh, pretty deep stuff here, uh, compromising ADFS and being able to create your own SAML uh, token. So in that first path up above, path number one, obtaining the SAML signing certificate normally entails first querying the private encryption key that resides on the EDFS container and then using that key to decrypt the signing certificate. The certificate can then be used to create illicit but valid SAML tokens that allow the actor to impersonate users, enabling to access enterprise cloud apps and services. So obviously we want to be able to detect this and then block it. So how do we do that? Well, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Defender for Identity can actually detect the actions that attackers take to steal the encryption key needed to decrypt the SAML signing certificate. Both of those solutions leverage unique LDAP telemetry to raise high severity alerts, highlighting the attacker's progress towards creating illicit SAML tokens. And so here are two different alerts, one in Defender for Endpoint, showing that there's a possible attempt to access ADFS key material, and then here's another one in Defender for Identity, Active Directory Attributes Reconnaissance using LDAP. 
All right, so detecting domain federation changes. So remember, if we go back a couple slides here, they can also go through and add their own uh, trust or they can modify an existing one. Well, we can detect that by running, you named it, a advanced hunting query. So for that second path, the attackers create their own SAML signing certificate that's outside of you know, your organization's environment. And so with Azure Active Directory admin rights, they can then add that new certificate as a trusted object. So the following advanced hunting query over here to the right um, allows you to go through Azure AD audit logs and show when domain federation settings are actually changed and modified, helping to discover where these attackers configure the domain to accept authorization tokens signed by their own signing certificate. So as these are rare actions, verify that any instances identified are the result of legitimate administrative activity. And I'll let you be the judge of that. If the SAML signing certificate is confirmed to be compromised or the attacker has added a new one, follow the best practices, and go out to the hyperlink there, for invalidating uh, through certificate rotation to prevent further use and creation of SAML tokens by that attacker. And you could also, uh, and additionally, affected ADFS servers may need to be isolated and remediated to ensure no remaining attacker control or persistence. Now, if the attackers accomplish either path, they gain the ability to create, again, illicit SAML tokens for the identities of their choosing and bypass MFA since the service or application accepting the token assumes MFA is a necessary previous step in creating a properly signed token. So to prevent attackers from progressing to the next stage in the kill chain here, which is to access cloud resources, the attack should be discovered and remediated at this stage. Again, leverages advanced hunting queries. Okay, now let's jump into detecting the hands-on keyboard activity in the cloud environment. So to do that, we're gonna take a look at the kill chain for stage three of this attack. And this is where those two paths we talked about before uh, come into play. So either using stolen SAML signing keys or uh, compromising admin privileges, create a new SAML signing key, and then uh, create a new or modify uh, a federation trust. And then they can create their own SAML tokens and then go out there and, you know, game over, right? So let's break down that kill chain and let's talk about stage three here of this attack. So with the ability to create illicit SAML tokens, the attackers can access sensitive data without having to originate from a compromised device or be confined to on-premises persistence. Now, by abusing API access via existing OAuth applications or service principles, they can then attempt to blend into the normal patterns of activity, and most notably apps or service principles with existing mail read or mail read write permissions to read email content via the, the Microsoft Graph API from Exchange Online. Huh. That's extremely important, keep that in mind. If the application does not already have read permissions for emails, then the app may be modified to grant those permissions. So we're basically talking about the ability to create your own OAuth app that can have the ability to read and write anything in Office 365. And not just Office 365, but it could be other SaaS applications as well. So let's go about identifying this and identifying the unusual addition of credentials to an OAuth app. So Microsoft Cloud App Security, MCAS, and that's one of my favorite products, has added new automatic detection of unusual credential additions to an OAuth app uh, to alert you about apps that have been compromised to extract data from the organization. Now the detection logic is built on an anomaly detection engine that learns from each user in the environment, filtering out normal usage patterns to ensure alerts highlight real attacks and not false positives. Now, if you see this alert in the environment and confirm malicious activity, take immediate action to suspend that user, mark them as compromised, reset their password, and remove those credential additions. And you may also want to consider disabling the app during the investigation remediation. And over on the right side here, you can see a screenshot from Microsoft Cloud App Security on this alert. So this is pretty cool stuff and extremely useful. Now, again, let's go back to advanced hunting queries. Using Microsoft 365 Defender, which as you know, MCAS plugs into, um, you can use an advanced hunting query over the Azure AD audit logs to examine when new credentials have been added to a service principle or application. And sorry, I have a little typo there, but in general, credential changes may be rare depending on the type and use of the service principle or application. So you should verify unusual changes with the respective owners to ensure they're the result of legitimate admin activity. Uh, so again, leverage these advanced hunting queries. They can really save you a lot of time. Now, 
discovering malicious access to mail items. Now, the OAuth applications and service principles with that mail read or mail read write permission from the graph uh, can read email content from Exchange Online. To help increase the visibility on these behaviors, the mail items access action is now available via the Exchange Mailbox auditing functionality. And so you can actually click on a link here and it'll tell you more about how to see if that feature is enabled. Uh, important note for customers though, if you have customized the list of audit events you are collecting, you may need to manually enable the, the telemetry and that hyperlink there will walk you through that. So let's talk again about how to detect this. Well, if more than a thousand mail items accessed audit records are generated in less than 24 hours, Exchange Online stops generating audit records for mail items accessed activity for 24 hours and then resumes logging after that period. And this throttling behavior is a good starting point for you to discover potentially compromised mailboxes. And again, you can use this query in Microsoft 365 Defender to be able to discover this. And you could also use it to create an alert too and notify you. Now you can also hunt for OAuth apps that are reading mail via the Graph API. So in addition to looking for that throttle telemetry, you can hunt for those apps reading mail via the API whose behavior has changed prior to a baseline period. So again, leverage the advanced hunting query and uh, in each one of these slides, there's a link to download that query and run it in the environment. Okay, let's start to wrap up here. Let's get into resources. Now there's a lot of information Microsoft has made available. I highly recommend you download this PowerPoint deck, you open up each one of these links and you review them thoroughly. There's a lot more going on here. Um, I'm gonna do another video about using Sentinel for this and Azure AD workbooks and a ton of other great stuff, but these are some great resources for you. So please leverage that. In addition, I talked about all these advanced hunting queries. Here's where you can go and download those. So that's also in the deck. And then I want you to keep in mind Microsoft Security Best Practices. Check out this document. It goes in depth into Microsoft Security Best Practices. In fact, I might do a video on this at some point. Also, you have to, and, and Matt's recommendation, consider implementing Privileged Access Workstation, PAWS and SAWS. This is a workstation that's only used for managing the environment by an admin and it's a clean source. Uh, please click on this link and go out there and explore this concept deeper and consider doing this in your environment. Okay, folks, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this gave you some ideas. I hope this was a valuable use of your time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up if you found this valuable. Share it with uh, your peers because it, it may help somebody else. And I hope everybody takes care, has a good rest of the day, and we'll see you in the next video.